Hey, it's Avery here. So I'm just going to show you real quick how you can format your book for Kindle. It is literally this fast. I'm going to show you what I do when I'm formatting an update for my book uh, now that I have everything set up so you can see how quick it really can be. And then I'm going to backtrack and show you exactly how I set it up to make this happen. So here's how I format my book. Are you ready? If you have a stopwatch, you can like set it now. And I'm done. Ta-da! That was it. That file that I just went and created, just like this, this Mobi file right here, I can upload that to Kindle right now and I'm done. It's that simple. Okay, so now I'm going to backtrack and show you exactly how I set everything up so that I can do that every single time I have an update to a book. So this isn't going to be a super polished video. It's not going to be anything fancy but it'll show you what you need to know and then you will not have to pay formatters ever again. Here's what I do. To start with, this is how I format all of my uh, books. I'm just going to show you the settings for each of these text documents and the folders, etc. So um, these ones here that all look like this, if you look over here in, I guess this is the inspector section, you can see which box are ticked off and what all of these um, settings say. So just take note of that. Here's the next one, my copyright. See, it looks the same. Read this first. It looks the same. Introduction, comments. So you see all these text ones, they're, they have the exact same settings. Um, this status and labeling, I don't use those functions, so you can ignore that. Um, next, my folders. These are, I have one folder for each chapter and the folder name is set as the chapter name. Um, I don't know if that matters anymore because it's been so long since I figured out how to do this, but you can take note of which boxes are checked. Again, these label and statuses, I don't think those matter what you do with those because I don't use those functions in Scrivener, but the check tick boxes down here, that's what you gotta pay attention to. So you'll see each of my chapter folders, you just take a quick glance here, you'll see they're all set exactly the same. Sorry, this is boring watching me doing this. do this, hey? Okay, so now um, the text documents within my chapter folders. Again, the text document that contains the content of that chapter is titled the name of the chapter. Now it's been, again, like I said, it's been so long since I set this up. I don't know if that matters anymore, but this is just how I do it. Now this, the settings are the same as for the folder with the exception that page break before is not ticked. So now we'll go through all the content in my chapters. And you can see that. Then at the end of my book, I have, did you enjoy this book? More books by me, special bonuses and appendix. Those are all set the same as, you know, these title pages, copyright, read this first, etc. at the beginning. Um, those are not chapters and they have the page break before ticked. So just take note of that difference. And then end notes, it kind of does that itself. This is what my end notes looks like. Um, I don't even remember if, I, I think I do have some for this book, but anyways, that's what it looks like. Next, for my book, there are ways, I think, of having Scrivener format everything in the compile settings. I don't do it that way because I like to see how my book is gonna look when I'm writing it or when I'm, you know, polishing it. So what I do is I format all my headings to look how I want them to look, the text to look how I want it to look um, within the titles. I format all of my quotes and whatever to be exactly how I want it to look in the actual book that my readers are going to see. So the reason this seems to work is when I'm finished writing a chapter, I'll, well, just go, I just go command A, I'm on a Mac. You can do control A if you're on a PC. And then I go to format, formatting, preserve formatting, and I select that. And once I select preserve formatting, you'll see you're going to end up with this light blue highlighted uh, content of your book. So I go through and for every bit of content on every section that's going to show up in the book, you'll see I've done that. They're all highlighted all the way through to the end. These chapter folders, of course, there's nothing in, you know, there's no text. You could write text here, I'm pretty sure, but I don't. Um, so that's something you need to take note of.
Also, something to take note of in Scrivener, under Project, Metadata Settings, put your project title. I just use my book title there, abbreviated title, put whatever you want there. I just use my book title. Um, and that's what I do. These, I don't use any of these, but that's what they look like in case it makes a difference. Now, the reason those metadata settings matter, for Kindle, I'm 99.9% .9 sure they don't matter. For your paperback, I don't think they matter for that either. But if you ever have to create an EPUB version of your book, they show up in the in the e-reader as whatever your metadata settings, say your project name is or their book title or whatever, it shows up in an EPUB when somebody opens it in iBooks or whatever they happen to be using to read that kind of book. So for that reason, I try to make it a habit to always make sure that my project name under the metadata is correct. Okay, so next, um, one thing I use, these little document notes in case you're curious what the heck this is and if it matters. This is just little notes I put to myself to remember what I have to do. So, you know, a lot of times I'll put notes to myself that in the paperback I gotta change links or fix something or whatever, because obviously no one can click on a link in a paperback. So that's how I use that. Um, next, for formatting, this is so easy. I just go up to File, then I go to Compile. Now I have already saved this as a custom format. Like you see in Scrivener, they've got a whole bunch of other ways of doing it, I guess. But I have saved, I've got one for Create Space. You know, they're, I publish mine as six by nine inch books. Um, they're all between 24 and 150 pages, so I can use the same settings. Um, but for now we're gonna do Kindle, but I just wanted to point that out because it's good to do because if you're gonna write a lot of books, then in future, literally all you would do is select the format, click compile, poof, you're done. You don't have to do anything else, so it's so easy. However, since I wanna show you exactly how I have this set up, I'm just gonna quickly scroll through all of my settings so you can just see exactly what every single one of these things looks like and make sure yours are set the same. So, scrolling, scrolling. These I'm pretty sure are just coming from you know how we, we have these tick bark boxes over here? I think this section is just pulling in the settings from there. Anyways, so that's that. Separators. Cover image, I have nothing there because Kindle does that for us, so I don't need a cover image. see what these look like. See my settings here. Ta-da! This. And that's it. So then I will go ahead and compile. I give version numbers to all mine because that way I can tell the files apart and know what I have uploaded when. Oh, I'm adding an extra zero, huh, whoops. And poof, it's all done. And here it is. So then when I'm done, how I check it is, I will right click and tell it, I like to open it with my Kindle app. Um, I don't like the Kindle pre Previewer app, so I, I used it in the very beginning, but I do not anymore. Um, that Kindle app, it's just that free one you can get from Amazon. Okay, so I can look in here and make sure that everything's functioning right, that when I click on the stuff here, it all opens. Sorry, I've got my text set really, really big. You can set it however you please. 
Anyways, it all seems to be working just fine. Clickable links are working. You know, so I would go through here and just literally click on every single chapter here to make sure it's going to the right place. I don't know, maybe I don't need to do that and this is just overly paranoid of me, but I would go in order. I'm kind of doing it random right now, but I would go in order through them all, make sure they work. I just like to see it for my, see for myself. Um, another thing I check when I am doing this is after one chapter is done, I want to make sure the new chapter starts on a fresh page because I don't want it to be just one long blob. A quick way of doing that is you can just back go back one page and you can see the previous chapter ends, the new one starts on a new page. Um, if you have any tables in there, you can go through and double check what they look like. I have one in one of these chapters. I don't remember which one anymore. Um, you can double check any links to your other books work and that's it. And that's how I do it. And then I upload that Mobi file to um, Amazon and you're all set. So that's it. So I don't know what formatters charge these days, if it's 60 bucks or 50 bucks, heck, even if it's 20 bucks. This is super, super, super fast to do. You just have to set it once, save your settings so that you have a, you know, a custom compile setting for Kindle. Um, I only upload books to Kindle and CreateSpace, so I have no idea how to do this for any other book sellers but hopefully this will save you some time and you won't have to spend a day or two hammering it out and, you know, through trial and error like I did back when I started. So yeah, hope you like it. Bye guys.